Hi there. My name is James Peak, and I am a professional origami artist and instructor. I'm also the owner of Fold Space Origami Studio, located in Oberlin, Ohio. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to fold one of my all-time favorite origami models, the traditional jumping frog. Why do I love this model so much? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because these frogs sure can jump. It's amazing what you can do with simply folding a piece of paper. Plus, we get to witness the metamorphosis of something ordinary transforming into something extraordinary. To fold this jumping frog, we are going to start with a square sheet of paper. Step one, we are going to make a book fold. Or in other words, we're gonna take one side of the square and fold it to meet the opposite side. Now, before you make the fold, let me suggest that instead of folding side to side as is depicted in the diagram, I generally like to fold up and away from myself. So we're still making the same fold, but we're just gonna hold the paper in a way that's a little different than what the diagram shows us. So how do I do that? Well, I'm gonna take the bottom edge and I'm gonna bring it up to meet the top edge and I'm gonna line everything up as best as I can before I make my crease. And once it's lined up, the old saying we love to use in origami is hold before you fold. And as I'm holding the paper, I'm gonna slide down the middle and I'm gonna start my crease and then I'm gonna go out to one side, back to the middle, and then out to the other side. And generally, you wanna make pretty sharp creases when folding origami. Now we unfold the book fold and I'll put it back the way the diagram shows it. And there's our book fold. In step two, we are going to make what we call an origami, a cupboard fold, where we're going to take the sides that run parallel to the crease in one at a time to meet the central crease. And just as before, I'm going to rotate the paper to make my fold. So now my crease is running horizontally, but I'm gonna start with the bottom edge. And just like before, I'm going to line it up with the crease in the middle before making any folds. And once it's ready, I hold it and then I fold it. And I like to come down the middle and go to one side and then to the other. And so that is one of our cupboard doors. And now let's make the other one. So now I'm going to rotate the paper so that this edge is at the bottom. And I'm actually, I'm gonna get this cupboard door out of the way for just a second so that I can better see that crease running through the middle. And I'll take that bottom edge, bring it up to the crease, hold it, then fold it. And now if I return the cupboard to the position depicted in the diagram, we see we now have two cupboard doors. Step three, we are now going to take the short edge of this rectangle that we were looking at, the short edge here at the bottom, and we're gonna bring it over here to meet this side edge. And we wanna do it, do so in its entirety, or in other words, we want the entire short edge at the bottom to be sitting along this vertical edge. And so what that means is that we're gonna make a crease that will run diagonally and it will connect to this corner right here. So let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna take that bottom edge and bring it over to the side. And I'm gonna line it up before I make any creases. I'm gonna make sure that that crease is hitting the corner down here. And once I'm satisfied, I can go ahead and make my crease. And now in step four, we will unfold step three. And when we do so, we want to make sure that this little corner down here also gets unfolded with the rest of the flap. Now, in step five, we will repeat the same step, but this time we will bring the short edge at the bottom to the left side. And another way to think about this is now that we have this diagonal crease, this corner is going to meet the end of this diagonal crease up here. So let's do that. Take the short edge, 
I'm going to fold it over to the side, line it up, hold it, and fold it. And there we go. And then we will unfold that flap as well. And just as before, let's make sure that we also unfold this little corner that uh, tends to want to stay folded when we open up that flap. Now, it is very important that between steps five and six that we flip the model over, and I'm going to flip the model over side to side so that now the cupboard doors are underneath the model, but the X that we just folded in the paper is still at the bottom. And in step six, we're going to bring the bottom corners of the, the rectangle up to meet the ends of the X. Or in other words, we're going to take this X shape and we're going to fold it in half so that we create a crease that runs right through the center intersection of those creases that cross one another. So I'm going to take those bottom corners and I'm going to bring them up and I'm going to make sure that they meet the ends of the X. And once they do, I can make my crease And you will see that these diagonal creases both meet right in the middle here along this creased edge. Okay, now for step seven, we are going to unfold the flap that we just folded. We are going to flip it back over to the other side, and I'm going to go side to side. And then we are going to rotate the model. So if that seemed confusing, what you want to have in front of you are the cupboard doors. Of course, we're going to keep them closed. And the X is now positioned in the top portion of the model. And now we get to do this really fun thing that we do in origami all the time called a collapse. And the way I usually like to start this collapse is I'm going to push my finger gently in the center of the X. And when I do that, the paper kind of pops, it kind of inverts into a slightly different position. And once I have done that, you'll see in steps eight and nine, we will collapse the model and flatten it. And see here how once that center is popped in here, if I kind of pull down on the sides here, the, the rest of the paper wants to kind of come with it. And as I do, I'm going to bring the whole top part of the model down so that I can eventually flatten the paper like so. And the paper is not going to want to sit flat on its own. So this is normal. If your paper is wanting to kind of open up a little bit, uh, it's not a problem. OK, I have just zoomed in just a little bit so that we can see a little bit better. And in step 10, you will see that we have created what looks like a house. And what we're going to do now in step 10 is we're going to take this two-story house and we're going to turn it into a one-story house. Or in other words, we're going to take the bottom edge of the house here, and you see this triangle up here? We're going to think of that as the roof. And we're going to take the bottom edge of the house and we're going to bring it up to meet the bottom edge of the roof or in other words the bottom edge of this triangle so we'll bring that up make a crease and i will point out that at this point in the model the layers are starting to build up a little bit so the creasing gets just a little bit more tricky but the building up of the layers is a good thing because that is what is going to make our jumping frog jump now Notice step 11, which is to the right of step 10 on the other page. We're going to take the side corners of the roof here and here, and we're going to take each of them one at a time up to the tip top of the roof. And this is going to create the front legs of the jumping frog. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to take this side corner here, and I'm going to bend it up towards the top of the roof so that the point meets at the top, at the apex. 
Now we're going to do the same thing on the left side here. Take that side corner, bring it up to the top. I'm going to give it a good pinch. Notice I'm, I'm folding in the air. You can still fold on the table, but I think for the video it might be a little bit easier uh, at times if I pick up the model uh, from time to time. All right, now, step 12. We are going to make another covered fold, or in other words, we're going to take the sides of the model here, or the sides of the house, and we're going to bring them in to meet the center line. And just as I did in the beginning of the video, uh, instead of s sitting here and trying to fold side to side like so, I'm actually going to rotate the model. Okay, so the house is on its side now, and I'm going to take that bottom edge and I'm going to bring it up to the center. And don't worry about the layers that are going to be kind of sliding out here. That's normal. So I'm going to take one side of the house and bring it to the center line. And I'll turn it back here. So there's one of our cupboard doors. And now I'll do the same to the opposite side. But I, once again, I'm going to turn the model so that I can fold up and away from myself. Generally speaking, folding up and away from yourself is a bit easier and more accurate, I find. But you can fold it however you like. But once I return the model to the original, original position uh, before we started that step, you will see that the sides of the house have been folded to the center line uh, to make yet another cupboard fold. OK, we're almost done. Step 13, we're going to do a little bit of work on the front legs of the frog. And what we're going to do, we're going to take the center edge, the middle vertical edge of each leg, and we're going to bring those each over to meet these diagonal lines that appear here and here. So I find that I like, I like to hold the model in my hands when I do this, and I'm going to use my thumbs and my, my, uh, my index fingers, and really all my fingers to be frank, but I'm going to kind of pinch this over and to the side. Okay, I'm going to take the center edge and I'm going to pinch it over to the side. And then I'm going to give it another pinch once I'm happy with where it is. And the exact position of this is not uh, uh, terribly important. And you can fold the front legs pretty much however you want. But once again, I'm taking that center edge over to one diagonal. And then I'm going to take the other center edge over to the other diagonal, and I'm going to kind of pinch as I kind of, kind of swing this flap over into the side. OK, we are in the home stretch. And for these final two creases of the jumping frog, we're going to do something a little different than what we normally do in origami. You might recall in the beginning of the folding process, I mentioned that generally speaking, we like to have really sharp creases when we fold. However, for this jumping frog model, uh, these final two creases that we make create the springy back legs or the jumping mechanism uh, that makes this frog leap or jump. Uh, so we are better off, if we want a frog that can really jump, we're better off making softer creases as opposed to really sharp creases. So I'll show you what I mean. In step 14, we see that we're going to take the bottom edge and we're going to bring these two corners up to meet these corners here. And you can't really see them because they're behind the legs. But if you flip the model over, you see there they are. It's these two corners. And this is just kind of a general guideline. But uh, I find it works well if you aim for these corners. I'm going to take the bottom edge. And now I'm definitely holding the model in my hand. You see how I kind of hold it with my uh, index and middle fingers in each hand. And I use my thumbs to kind of roll that bottom edge upwards towards those two points here and here. But as I said, I'm not going to make a sharp crease. I'm just going to give it just a little pinch just enough so that the paper knows uh, that I want it to be in that position. But of course, it's not going to stay in that position. And look here, if I let it slide out from under my hand, you can kind of see where this spring mechanism comes from. And finally, the final step, number 15, <laughs> we are going to take that same edge that we just brought up here, 
the one that we just swung upwards, we're going to take the same edge and we're going to bring it back down towards this soft crease. And we want to make sure that we don't go past that bottom edge. Otherwise, the back of the paper will kind of get caught under your finger when you try to jump it. But I'm going to kind of, you see I kind of bend this down ever so slightly. And just enough so the paper kind of knows what I want it to do, but I'm not going to make a sharp crease. And you can see already that is the spring mechanism. And finally, to make the frog jump, simply put it on the table and you're going to pull the spring back. You're going to charge up the spring uh, with your finger and then just kind of let the model slide out from under your finger. And once again, you can see why you don't want that back edge to hang out too far because if you do, uh, your finger would catch it and the frog isn't going to go anywhere. But if you fold it just to that edge, oh, there you <laughs> uh, it works really well. And once you're done, let her rip. <laughs> uh, you can come up with all sorts of fun games. I mean, you could have a jumping contest to see how far your frog and your friend's frogs can jump. Or you could create your own little obstacle course or, or little sort of mini events for your frog to jump over or jump into. You can have a lot of fun with this. Thank you so much for folding with me today. You know, one of my favorite things in the world is sharing origami with others. So I sure hope you enjoyed it. I hope your frogs are jumping off the table. And if you want to learn more, you can check out the Fold Space Origami Studio YouTube page. And if you'd like to get in touch, you can find me online at foldspacestudio.com. Happy folding!